We noticed doors would open and my wife would see a shadow figure moving out of the corner of her eye. We aren't particularly religious, but when we both start experiencing sleep paralysis, we call the Catholic Church to come bless the house. The problem stopped the same day it was blessed, which somehow made it spookier. And then we also got this voicemail from one of the producers of this show. This is Michelle from Philadelphia. A couple weeks ago, I was attempting to take a nap, and I heard a man's voice in my bedroom. And my bedroom is below ground, so it's, it's pretty quiet. And um, I haven't heard that since, but that night, I had a sleep paralysis dream of a spirit in my room basically terrorizing me, but I, I was aware I was in my bedroom and, and could see my bedroom around me, but also was hallucinating the auditory and visual hallucinations. So yeah, it was absolutely terrifying and um, I couldn't sleep in my bedroom for a couple of days after that. Okay, Chris, I'm I'm personally really glad we're talking about this because I suffer from Just, sleep paralysis and it is horrifying yeah. and spooky and scary and I hate it and I want it to stop. Uh, please give me a science reason and tell me how to make this stop. Well, to answer the second part first, they really, and this is one thing that really annoys me, we've tried to get funding to, to really look at this properly um, yeah, in terms of what are the best strategies that people can adopt to try to deal with sleep paralysis. I mean, and what that would involve is a kind of two parts. One is trying to reduce the frequency of sleep paralysis episodes. And really, we can be pretty sure, there are some tips I can give you. Uh, don't sleep on your back. You're much more likely to have an attack if you sleep on your back. Uh, good sleep hygiene. So go to bed at, at a regular time, get up at a regular time, try to avoid anything that might interfere with your sleep pattern, so, you know, al too much alcohol late at night or caffeine and so on and so forth. Um, they, so there's, that, that should help to kind of reduce the actual incidence, but then people say, oh, yes, yeah, I, I know when it's happening that it's sleep paralysis, but it still terrifies me. How can I cope with that? And, and people try different things. I mean, what the, the usual thing is to kind of just summon up as much willpower as you can and try to move a, a little finger or a, a toe or something and that will break the spell. Um, other people, some people learn to actually enjoy it, believe it or not. They, they kind of oh. treat it as if they're, yeah, I know. Um, they treat it as if they're kind of just watching a really uh, immersive horror movie. Oh no. And, and, uh, yeah. They are. <laughs> and other people say, there's no way I could do that. There's no way. So, you know, we do need more research on that. In interestingly, I was having a conversation with uh, one of my postgrads earlier today, um, and she wants to look at the, the effects of different kinds of uh, belief systems, whether, whether there is a difference between the religious and the non-religious person in terms of how they interpret what's going on and whether they can adopt different strategies and how effective they are, and even differences between religions. Because you can certainly look throughout different cultures and find that you know, what happens during sleep paralysis tends to be interpreted within that belief system. Mm. So, uh, some, you know, in some cultures they'll see, they'll be interpreted as being a jinn, in others it's a ghost or it's a demon, and so on. Space um, alien. I wish I could give you more advice on that. I really <laughs> genuinely do because it's one of my uh, favourite topics. Uh, and yeah, you know, I, I really sympathise with people, those poor unfortunate people, who get vivid sleep paralysis on a regular basis. Uh, Chris, you kind of brought this up, but this is something that exists across cultures, across times. What are some of the common threads when we're talking about the paranormal uh, throughout history and throughout cultures? So anyway, guys, that, this is uh, actually NPR I'm listening to. I can't remember that fellow's name. He's a psychology professor who studies paranormal. I don't know his name. You can find this whole program on, I'm sure, npr.org. Go look at today's edition of Highway A1A or whatever it's called. Uh, <clears throat> but, but anyway, I, I'm not going to repeat my whole rant, how I kicked a space alien's ass. Uh, you can find that uh, video somewhere, how I kicked a space alien's ass, and get the full five-part harmony. But uh, just the, the, the Cliff Notes version of that story uh, is when I say 
I have been abducted by space aliens uh, for 22 years. And that's somewhat tongue in cheek. What I suffered with for 22 years of my life was sleep paralysis. Uh, which I have, after reading DMT, A Spirit Molecule by Rick Strassman, what I have determined it is, is your pineal gland dumping DMT into your system, dumping an overdose of DMT into your system. Uh, and setting off these. Now, for me personally, 100% of my sleep paralysis episodes began with the sighting of a UFO, quote, in my dreams. I have never seen a UFO, a quote, <clears throat> well, I've seen some weird things we all have, but I've never had, you know what I'm saying, an up-close, real life waking UFO sighting. In my entire life, never seen a UFO or certainly not a space alien. But in the sleep paralysis episodes, in my case, for whatever reason, 100% of my sleep paralysis episodes began with a UFO uh, UFOs and space aliens. 100% of them. I never had a sleep paralysis episode that was not initiated by a UFO sighting and space alien attack, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I have never had a dream about UFOs and space aliens that did not end up resulting in a uh, sleep paralysis episode. Are you following me? Uh, and there is a 100% correlation in my life. And as they were saying, it is the single most terrifying thing you will ever encounter in your entire life. And uh, especially with these space aliens or these or the succubus, the incubus, Whatever the hell you want to call these things, that uh, I, on after reading DMT, the spirit molecule, I do believe they are, quote, real entities that communicate with us through DMT, through our pineal gland. I'm not getting into all of this weirdness. You, uh, before you uh, discount this theory, read DMT, a spirit molecule. I, I am 100% convinced that uh, that's what causes these terrifying episodes. Now, how I forever cured myself of this, as it was now uh, 22 years ago, now I have been sleep paralysis free, alien abduction free, whatever you want to call this, uh, whatever you want to call this phenomenon. Uh, for 22 years, if you listen to how I kicked a, a, a space alien's ass, again, you'll get the full story. But the short version of how I cured it forever, it's never returned, is I was uh, in a sleep paralysis support group back in the year 2000 that I joined one of these internet sleep paralysis support groups and it was this woman from London, England, uh, who was took an interest in, in my particular story. She had also had a long history of alien abduction, identical to mine. You, you know, the UFO sightings uh, leading to the sleep paralysis and these attacks by these space aliens. Whatever you want to call these little fuckers, these evil little fuckers, okay? And her advice to me was before I went to sleep, instead of fighting them, to actually invite this energy in. Invite this energy in. Send them an invitation to come give me their best shot. 
and, and don't fight them. Don't fight them. Uh, you know, as she said, uh, Sam, you 22 years you've been dealing with these little fuckers. They have never physically harmed you. They do not have the ability to physically harm your body. It, it is psychological terror that they're putting you through. And if you invite them in and say, guys, I, I'm done with it. I'm no longer going to let you rule my life. I am taking my power back from you. Come on. Come on in and invite them in, well, I, as crazy as I thought she was, that is exactly what I did before I went to sleep that night. I invited the single biggest terror into my life to, to come give me their best shot. Uh, I, I, I laid down on my back. Uh, these happen virtually 100% of the time. On your back, I lay down on my back, went to sleep. I had not been asleep for 10 minutes before the UFO and the space aliens were there. And uh, you can f go over to how I kicked a space alien's ass to find out what happened. But just as the woman promised, once I did that, this was 22 years ago, once I invited the, the episode, the sleep paralysis episode, the DMT dump, the space aliens, the incubus, the succubus, whatever you want to call it, I invited them in and uh, just dealt with them and uh, we ended up making a truce uh, and... I have never in my entire life, in 22 years, had another sleep paralysis episode, another alien abduction episode. For 22 years, I have never seen a UFO in a dream. Never happened. One time in 22 years. I have never seen a UFO. I have never seen a space alien uh, whatever you call it, that is how you cure yourself of sleep paralysis. It's that simple. It really is that simple. I understand the very suggestion that you, anyone who, su who has suffered in, from this terror, and it is hands down the most terrifying event you will ever have in your life. Uh, if you want to put an end to it, that's how you do it. At least it worked for that woman in London, England, and it worked for me. That's all I know. Uh, I cured myself in one night, and I have been sleep paralysis, UFO, and space alien free for 22 years. And my guess is the vast majority of these alien abduction episodes, this is, if not 100%, the vast, vast, vast majority of alien abduction episodes are the sleep paralysis episodes. And I am pretty much convinced that what triggers them is DMT, your pineal gland being overactive and dumping too much DMT uh, into your bloodstream and basically giving you an ayahuasca trip that you did not ask for is essentially what's going on. You're having a DM, you're smoking DMT or having an ayahuasca trip. Uh, and, and, and these little entities, as Terrence McKenna, what is he calling self-replicating machine elves, whatever you want to call them, they are real from another dimension, but you do not need to deal with them. And if anybody uh, seriously wants to, wants to have a serious discussion with me, uh, email me at Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com and I will be happy to have a, a serious conversation. This is no joke. 
this whole subject of the sleep paralysis. It's not, it's not a fucking joke. Uh, and it's so easy to, to fix. Anyway, I have to head into the bank to deal with the more earthly mundane shit of paying my school taxes. Get out there and uh, end your sleep paralysis episodes while you still can. Bye guys.